Hey guys, today I am going to give you a realistic expectation from the game store and kind of my perspective and probably other game store owners perspective. So Pokemon is still hot. Pokemon is the end all be all. It is selling a lot better than before COVID still. You know, back in you know olden days, we would have you know, distributor would try to dump evolutions on us. It was kind of hilarious, really. They would just have evolution packs, you know, when it was mostly player based. It would, you want GXs, right? Not EXs. Evolution was the last set to have the EXs, so they were completely unplayable. And our distributor would just dump these packs on us, and we would be always like, no, no, we want more magic. We don't want Pokemon. We want magic. <laughs> <laughs> how things have changed since the COVID. So first of all, pre-COVID-19, I wanted as much magic as I could get and as little Pokemon. So at that time, I was 70%, 80% magic, and then the rest would be Pokemon and then Funko figures. And so like, I, it, I was even less than 15% Pokemon because Pokemon didn't really sell. We had Legos, we had Funkos, we had uh, board games. We, we even tried board games out at that time. Uh, we had anime figures, of course, and so on. Now, now today, we are trying to be as heavy Pokemon as possible. We still do anime figures, but from this distributor, we have split magic. So we are 70% Pokemon, I would say, hopefully. And we are 15% sports cards, which includes baseball. So 5% baseball, 5% football, 5% basketball. And then 15% magic. So you look at the split we used to be, pre-COVID, it was, we were 80, 70, 80%, 70 to 80% magic. And then very little amounts of each. And now we're heavy Pokemon. I think every store in their right mind is going to look at the margins and going to make that same decision it's not a difficult decision to make pokemon sells like crazy i was telling the story of me taking uh my silver tempest pallets and a neighbor stops and he just wants to buy two boxes and you know it, whatever right like i've never had that experience happen with magic where i have a neighbor stop me to try to buy some magic cards for me it just never has happened there are some things that I have to work on in Magic. I think Magic has to kind of redeem itself as a store owner. I, I hate seeing these Amazon sales that are just way, I mean, it's not even like a dollar. They're, they're like not even 10, like 20, $30 below distribution cost. <laughs> you look at, I don't know how anyone can look at that and say, yeah, let me carry some more of this. Yeah, give me some more of that product. Like the Dominaria draft is at 80 with a box topper is below distribution cost by a good $10. You, you can't, you, you can't even make this stuff up. I mean, it's really, really bad. And when you're a store, you care about margins, you care about profits, you care obviously about overhead and rent and you have all these additional expenses you have. And I know a lot of stores today, they are just going online only. And that may be the future of the business. Um, instead of a brick and mortar, it might just be online. And at that point, where are you gonna play? I know a lot of people, oh, I'll play at my home. Well, where are you gonna meet new players? Oh, I'll meet them on Facebook. It's just kind of like weird. You cannot, the reason a game store is so important for these games, I, I honest to God tell you that community would not exist. Magic would not be as big as it is unless they had the game stores, because it's a place for multiple people to meet new people. It's a place that if you're interested in magic, you can come around 6 p.m. Friday night magic, and you can meet some other people who are also interested in magic that you otherwise wouldn't meet. And that's very powerful as a marketing tool, really. Like you're not going to invite a bunch of random strangers on Facebook to your home. That's just simply not safe. And I would never recommend that for anyone to do. But if you wanted to meet somebody on Facebook at the game store, that's much more logical, right? So the people saying, oh, the brick and mortar and stuff, it doesn't matter. It, it matters for one game and it's Magic the Gathering. Maybe it doesn't matter if you're collecting sports cards. It doesn't matter if you're collecting Pokemon cards because at that point you're a collector. 
but it does matter if the game is actually supposed to be played with other human beings in person. You might have a great play group that you feel comfortable inviting to your home, but most people don't. And how do you find that play group? And you probably found it at your local card game store. So the brick and mortar for Magic, I mean, I just tell you what it is. Before you know, COVID, we wore heavy, heavy Magic, as many of you guys know, and you're buy listing. Even during COVID, we're buy listing like crazy. And then now after COVID, we're 15% Magic, 15% sports cards of various varieties, and 70% uh, Pokemon. The Pokemon stuff, I mean, it just sells. Like the UPC charge art, you're gonna order as much as we want for like 70 bucks a pop. And uh, you can't even keep them in stock because the Rudy Chan buys them all from you. This is fascinating and this is honest truth. Now, what if Magic had better margins? Would I carry 50-50 Magic? Yeah, I think I would. Like you don't want to be invested all in in Pokemon, right? Just like you didn't want to be all in in Magic. You want multiple card games where if something fails, well, I still have this other card game making me money. So it's okay to take a loss on a card game, in my opinion, if the long-term health is vibrant, that you can believe that, okay, fine, I didn't sell the boxes I wanted, but these boxes will eventually have some type of value. And that right now is Pokemon, that is not magic. I have a gut feeling that a lot of stores are making that decision right now because it's the end of the year, we're doing our calculations, we're calculating how much we sold, inventory, we're doing our, uh, what is it called? I just did this just a few days ago. It's a system. Point of sale system, P point of sale, POS, yes. We're doing our POSs and seeing what inventory is left, what inventory is quote missing, you know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, what we should restock on. Uh, point of sale, is it called point of sales? POS, that doesn't sound right. Um, hmm. But anyway, I did all of that and the number one seller for my store was Pokemon. And Pokemon outsold Magic three to one. Magic sold a little bit, but not that much. Um, we might move online. I don't know. We have we're live streaming, and that seems to go be going really well. When we live stream, we get sixty to hundred people watching. So that's actually bigger than most, uh, if not almost all, of the Magic streamers. So I do want Magic to be successful. It is in my best interest for Magic to do well, just because then I would have a hedge, you know, like people, I don't want magic to fail. That's the biggest thing that I can tell you. It's not the more healthy games I have that I carry, the better I'm off because if something were to go wrong with Pokemon new set, let's say the Pokemon new set for whatever reason didn't sell, I could just sell more magic cards, right? Hi guys.